The news came out today. The Utica Comets have their brand new head coach, the third coach in team history, and he joins us today, Mr. Kevin Deneen. Well, coach, just tell us how you're feeling. Oh, great. Thanks, Jason. Good to be, well, good to have you guys here because uh, you guys were good enough to drive over to my place over in the Adirondacks here. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, a New York guy, uh, consider myself a New York guy, no matter where this game has taken us, we've always had our spot here. And uh, now I'm going to be right down the road in Utica. So very exciting for myself and my family. So fans would ask, what kind of team can we foresee in Utica the upcoming season? Obviously the first under the, uh, the umbrella of the New Jersey Devils organization, but what do you anticipate? What kind of team are you gonna put on the ice for this, uh, this team? Well, part of the appeal for me on this job was uh, where the New Jersey Devils are in their evolution right now. And if you look at their roster, uh, I think one of the things that really sticks out for you is you look at the ages and uh, uh, boy, are they a young group and, uh, you know, they are in that uh, area that uh, a lot of draft picks are coming. Uh, they plan on using Utica as a major part of their development of all these young players. If someone asks you to describe your coaching style, what would you say that it, it is uh, characterized by? Oh boy, well, I, uh, it's, it's not Ted Lasso, okay? We watched that the, <laughs> the last uh, week, we did our little binge here and I uh, love the series. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Uh, very enjoyable. I find uh, uh, for me, um, I find that uh, one of the best compliments you can have is when somebody can identify the way your team plays. Uh, there's a running theme in, in how you uh, play and, and uh, when your teams play hard, uh, I think that's important. I think last year was a very unique year with the, uh, uh, the, the condensed schedules and no fans in the building. Uh, we like to be a team that uh, is very aggressive on the offensive side of things and, uh, and hard to play against on the defensive side. So um, I've always described it as a pressure-based team. Uh, obviously, system-wise, you are uh, very in sync with the way uh, the New Jersey Devils are going to play the game, and uh, uh, that's always exciting. I've had the opportunity to work with Lindy Ruff when he was in Buffalo and I was in Portland and uh, could not have a better guy as an American League coach uh, to uh, um, be able to bounce things off of and, and talk a lot of hockey, so uh, I'm excited to get going. A coach in the NHL, you also played over well over a thousand games in the NHL as well, the captain of an NHL team. You mentioned leadership. How important is it to have quality leadership at the AHL level? Well, I can speak from a coaching perspective. It just makes things so easy. You know, when you have uh, quality leadership, I was in Portland for six years in San Diego uh, for a couple. And uh, when you have quality leaders, it, uh, it just makes the coaching so much easier. And uh, it's... Uh, uh, is it guys that uh, are on the bubble of being NHL players or uh, understand what their role is and uh, I think when you really get uh, uh, that quality guy uh, there's a lot of push uh, for your young prospects but there's also uh, a lot of cheering for them as well you know when you see somebody else get called up uh, sure hey it's human nature that uh, well, hey why not me but uh, uh, I've always noticed how uh, when your leadership is uh, real good people and quality guys, uh, they're very, very happy to see their teammates get called up. I know your dad coached Gordie Howe for a couple of years, had some success in Houston. He Just did. take us back to when you were a kid. Do you have a memory of being a young man in the locker room, maybe looking at Gordie Howe and, and, and what was that like? I, I, now, I'm dating myself because I remember some pretty groovy suits back in the day, <laughs> maybe all leather or, or some denim suits that were all the style uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And um, Gordy was a guy, my dad played with him. He was the one that brought him to Hartford. I think it was a fabulous experience for the whole Howe family, the opportunity for Mark and Marty to play with their dad. But uh, Gordy, uh, could not be one of the nicer men that you'll ever meet. And you can hear that to, to this day, whether G Wayne Gretzky talks uh, very fondly of, uh, of Gordy, and uh, as, as would I, and I had some great experiences uh, 
but uh, I remember more than anything the abuse he used to give me as a kid, <laughs> and that goes from literally grabbing me by my ears when I would have been about 10, and lifting me up, and I, uh, my, I was trying as hard as I could not to cry. Uh, you know, Gordy Howe, I can't cry in front of Gordy Howe, but he's got my ears and he's picking me up, and uh, I can go on about five more stories like that, but uh, boy, we used to spend time over at their house, and when you think of it, Mark and Marty were teenagers at that time playing with their dad, so they were almost uh, closer in age, well, they were to my older brothers, and uh, so they used to pile around a little bit. So uh, great, great memories of the Howe family, and uh, what a way for a kid to grow up. Take us now, let's fast forward a little bit, 1992, you're playing for Philadelphia, and your dad is the head coach of the team. Right. Um, I assume you don't call him dad in the room, or maybe you did, or what was no, the relationship No, like? you know what, no, I, I, we used to call him Foxy, I think everybody oh, yeah. did, it was kind of his nickname, and uh, I was newly married at the time, and my wife and I had just uh, been traded from Hartford to Philly, so, uh, you know, all of a sudden we had a little transition in our life, and uh, go to the rink uh, one day, and Shell Samuelson, who's about six foot eight, kind of says to me, well, what do you think? I was like, what? He goes, a new coach, I said, no, I said, who? He's like, come on, you know. He says, it's your dad. <laughs> so that's the kind of relationship that we had that uh, as much as there was father and son and we spend uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas and that kind of thing over there, it was a fabulous thing to uh, uh, just go to the rink and, and see how he operated. And I would say, and I would say, most of my teammates would agree with me that uh, I think he was a little harder on me than the rest of the oh. crew. So, uh, well, you, you, uh, you had good numbers that year. You were only second in scoring to <laughs> Rod Brindamore, so I assume you got power play time. Yeah, I never got cheated on that. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> at the end of it, uh, uh, it was a great experience, you know, to be around my mom and my dad, and uh, uh, you know, go to the rink with uh, everything. But definitely a little separation between church and state there. You know, we left the the work thing at home and. Uh, uh, if we ever did get together, it was kind of just to, to chat in general, but uh, a very fond memory for me is, uh, is the opportunity to play for my dad. Take me back now. Uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit, though. We're going to go to just after the Florida Panthers. So that ends. And then you make a phone call to Bob Nicholson, who was running Hockey Canada at the time. Right. And you asked him if, uh, and you tell me if this is true, you asked him if there's anything you could do, uh, you have a place for you in Hockey Canada. And he says to you, and you're thinking maybe the World Championships, and he says, Correct. how would you uh, think about coaching the Canadian women's team at the Olympics? Yes, and that was uh, that's almost a story. I was uh, There was an initial phone call, and then he called me back about 10 days later, and that's when he dropped the Olympic thing on me, and uh, I was kind of sucking my thumb, feeling sorry for myself. I was actually not that bad because I was in the Florida Keys on the front of my uh, <laughs> boat with a fly rod in my hand. So it wasn't that bad, but uh, uh, you know, the opportunity to be a part of the Olympics and I had an, uh, a chance to call some of my uh, friends in the coaching community and they could not have been uh, more supportive and said, what a great opportunity. And, and for me, it was a really short time frame, but uh, you know the opportunity. I, I went as a player in '84 and played in Sarajevo, and uh, the opportunity to go back and coach uh, couldn't pass it up. And uh, at the end of it, it was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. What an incredible bunch of high-achieving, fabulous athletes and people. Uh, to me, I, uh, a lot of things I learned every day I went to the rink, I still use in practice to this day. And I just want you to take us through the moment. You're down 2 nothing in that, that game against the U.S. Yep. You're down 2 nothing in the game. At what point did you, did you ever, did it ever enter your mind that it maybe just wasn't meant to be? And then of course, what fans made in the U.S. may lament is that you won the game in overtime. Yeah, 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 for sure. It was. Uh, a really dramatic game, and I think uh, Hockey News had it as one of his ten, ten greatest games of all time, and uh, I would tend to agree. I mean, it was hard fought, it was back and forth, it was uh, uh, just an amazing game, and I think we scored with about four minutes to go to make it 2-1. And then ended up getting an empty netter uh, uh, with about uh, a minute and a half to go, not without some drama before with an empty net and the Americans shooting the puck down hitting the post. Uh, I can't get much closer You're to that. That kind of closes this. the... Uh... <laughs> I'll ask you just one more thing about your, your past, and that's 
the, the greatest achievement in all of hockey and all of our sport is winning a Stanley Cup, I think. And you're on the bench for a team that was just absolutely incredible. Joel Quenville's the head coach there and, and talking about Chicago in 2015. It's probably hard to put into words what that was like, getting through the entire process and of course coming out of it with a, with a ring. But I imagine for you that's one of the heights of your entire career. It really is. And uh, I tell you, I still, I mean, I've always done it, even before I'd won a cup, but you watch uh, whether it's Tampa the last two years, and you kind of watch those interviews after, right? And you're sitting there, you're watching, and how does it feel? And, and, and everybody just kind of goes, it's unbelievable. And it's just, you know, it, it really is hard to put into words and how hard it really is to get through four series. Not only was it a, just an incredible experience, but it was a fabulous lesson. And I'm incredibly fortunate not only to be surrounded by an unbelievable, talented like bunch of players that really got it. Uh, to me, it was, uh, boy, it was like College 101 working with Joel and Mike Kitchen and uh, getting an opportunity to see uh, uh, the game from their side. I think uh, from a coaching perspective, you couldn't do much better than that. Okay, so we'll just end on this. I'll give you a name. You just tell me the first thing that pops in your mind, okay? And then, then you just, whatever comes to your mind, you tell <laughs> us, all right? And these aren't tough, but uh, uh, Lake George. Uh, home. Joel Quenville. Uh, hockey savant. Uh, Bill Deneen. Uh, Foxy. <laughs> Annie Deneen. Uh, Priceless and patient, <laughs> double P's. Very good. Um, and just last question, Coach. What do you what do you hope to get out of this new experience, this new chapter in, in your long and illustrious career as a head coach and as a player as you move forward to Utica? What's the you know what's the big picture here for you and for the team? To me, we want to go in there. We want uh, uh, to not only uh, play hard for your fans, but we want to have people that embrace the community. Hopefully, some of these guys are only gonna be in Utica for a couple months, but we want them to get uh, out to meet people, to shake hands, to say hello, uh, to uh, make the face of the Comets something that uh, not only we and the folks in Utica are proud, but the Jersey Devils and the hockey community in, in general says, hey, that's a good bunch of guys, and uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, probably the, the exciting part for me. Thank you for today, for your hospitality, and thanks for having us. Pleasure's all mine.